DD 2019 is now behind us. But like many developers who we fled San Francisco, are at least the most on that center. We are still processing some of the lessons we picked up from the many, many great talks at this year's show. Inspired by blogger Chris Zakowski, we at Gamma Sutra have reached into our own camera phones and grabbed the slides that left a specific impression on us. Whether you were at DD this year and missed these talks, or could not attend for various reasons, we hope our takeaways help you with your own game development process. To kick things off, here's two lines from Editor-in-Chief Chris Craft. As phone that managed to survive being in constant proximity to Gracie Cowles Jr. Foot Graft in his classic game Postmortem on Sega's Panzer Dragoon, Panzer Dragoon's Wii, and Panzer Dragoon Saga. The actor and series creator Yukio Futatsuki of that game studio, Grounding, was candid about the internal pressure at Sega to make Saturn games that could compete visually with the original PlayStation. Sega Saturn had superior 2D capabilities compared to PlayStation, but PlayStation had Saturn beat in terms of 3D graphics. For 3D games like Panzer Dragon, Saturn developers had to implement rendering tricks that took advantage of the Saturn's 2D strengths. The pressure brought upon by intense focus on PlayStation as a Competitor still has not left foot of city. Even to this day, I have a lingering trauma about this anytime someone mentions the original PlayStation. Those PlayStation Classic commercials made me real mad, he said. So, do not mention the original PlayStation around foot of city. Graft, in the session, interactive story without challenge mechanics. The design of F.I.R.E.W.A.T.C.H. Campo Santos Chris Ramos outlined practical methods to make a narrative-focused game believable, reactive to player actions, and flexible in terms of game design tools. Ramos, incidentally, a gun at Sutalam, cited a popular game dev called That's Open, attributed to civilization creator Sid Meier. A game is a series of Interesting decisions. Ramo put his own spin on that when it comes to games like F.I.R.E.W.A.T.C.H. A good interactive narrative is a series of interesting outcomes. This stance is reflected in the way that Fireworks narrative is incredibly reactive to player choices, not just through textual choices, but also to player actions. So many of these transparent decisions that players make were taken into account by Fireworks writers and designers, who made sure even the smallest decisions had outcomes that would surprise and delight players. Contributing editor Alex Worrell had a lot of favorite slides, including an image of a children's slide emerging from the rear of an elephant sculpture. We will not be printing that one. Worrell, this slide. From Video Game History Foundation founder Frank C. Follow this talk on. It's still emulation. Saving Video Game History. Before it's too late. Reminds us how important it is to have people who are working to preserve video game history. While a well-designed game can teach a player how to play. It takes an expert to teach you why the game was played and what that experience was like. Worrell, this slide, from the BD 2019 talk on a fashion in most games sucks, and why you should care, by Kate Fox Games. Victoria Chan illustrates the three axes along which the fashion in your games communicates meaning to players. Worrell, veteran indeed that Jason Rohrer, threw up this slide during his talk on 2014 versus 2018, the shape of financial success, before and after the indie apocalypse, to reinforce one bit of advice, if you are worried about making a great game that nobody will buy, look at your own play history, and try to create this a game you 
actually play for long periods, rather than the kinds of games you keep telling yourself you do you like to play. Warrow, in his GD 2000, a 19 talk on making games that stand out and survive, Slime Rancher director Nick Popovich encouraged the devs to think of their games in terms of animated gifts. If someone can get your game in a single GIF, use Popovich, then you have eliminated a lot of the friction that might keep them from buying a copy. Warrow, in this other two slides, second slide below, from Popovich's talk, devs are encouraged to create a place bar mode that feels like home, in order to give players a comfortable, low-stress place to head out, a return to without much friction. This encourages them to keep playing your game, even after long periods away, which in turn raises the odds that they will buy some DLC, or inspire a friend to buy a copy as well. Alice only had one favorite slide, but in a very on-brand fashion for her, it was about Hitman. McLoon, it's a slide that probably does not make much sense without a good helping of context, but still my favorite of the show. During Matt Potent and Tenderson's talk on applying social anthropology principles to level design, she shared this color-coded map. It's a map of what many consider hit man 2016 as very best level, saw pins but overlaid with color to define the six different kinds of public and private spaces that are found throughout Hitman's levels. You will have to check out my story on the talk on my Twitter thread on what I could not fit into my story on the talk far before and down. But in short those different kinds of spaces each communicate a lot of information to players about their purpose and potential limitations. Just through knowledge most have from everyday life. This was not a consideration when I O Interactive was making these levels. However, at least not consciously, Anderson was only an intern at the time and applied these terms and colors to the map as a way for her to better understand the team's level design practices and apply terminology to something that was, at the time, new to her. As an end result, Hitman's level design is more readable to a newcomer, and experienced designers have a better understanding of how spaces function and interact. This slide is a neat example of what fresh eyes bring to a project and, given that these terms carried on into the development of Hitman 2, an example of how new perspectives and sometimes even concepts from outside of game dev, can lead to more informed design decisions. For my own favorite slides, see Nankamasu Joski do like tweeting. I pulled a few from talks that went outside my personal purview about narrative game design. DD is a great opportunity for devs of different backgrounds to get a crash course in how their colleagues make games. And I thought it was important to expand my writer-oriented brain into the worlds of business, AI, and animation. Francis, first, there's this slide from Sophie Brennan's talk on the animation of Otto Octavius from Marvel's Spider-Man. Octavius comes off as an effortless creation when you are playing in Sonic superhero game, but watching Brennan break down how it pickle his rig was proved to be an incredible experience at DD. Brennan's slide here contrasts to a prior slide that showed the results of creating an individual rig for each of Octavia's tentacles. She followed up by breaking down a lot of the pseudocode and mathematic principles that helped make drive the character's unusual limbs. This particular slide struck me as a good shorthand for Hal Brennan and her colleagues at Insomniac CEPTULYZDD animation process for Octavius. It's one thing to just say, it's a Spider-Man game. We will have Doc Ock on his limbs, we'll do Doc Ock things. 
but without a real prop to move around. Like in the Sam Raimi film Spider-Man Tour, it's difficult to imagine how you could tell a computer to seamlessly manipulate such odd limbs. At DD, Brandon did a stellar job explaining that conceptualization process to the crowd. Francis, this slide comes from Johnny's photos. Talk on the development of Spinautica, which charted the game's course from a six-month, maybe mobile godless exploration game, and into a case study of the modern, early access adventure title. Boto's talk was illuminating on a number of topics. The instant feedback system he discussed showed off some amazing telemetry. But the slide above fills in conversation with the slide from Jason. Roarers talk about farming sites developers should be approaching game development in 2019.